सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इन जस्ट ए कपल ऑफ डेज फ्रॉम नाउ इंडियन एयरफोर्स will be celebrating its birthday its 90th birthday so a special one so happy birthday indian air force you are a marvelous fighting force and you've been terrific in war time and in peace time because you've carried out so many complex operations from from disaster relief also to evacuation of indians wherever <coughs> and whenever they've been in trouble so once again happy birthday or a happy anniversary wonderful anniversary and may you always fly with glory and you know what there is also a birthday present from for you and that has come from hindustan aeronautics limited so raksha mantri rajnath singh just unveiled or inaugurated the new combat helicopter that hal has produced for use by indian air force and also by the army uh, because both use combat helicopters in the indian system now this helicopter is indian made first of all i don't know why and i don't in fact i'd like to research how did it happen and when it happened but at some point in our collective usage we decided that we will not call an indian built military system an indian made system we will say we will call it an indigenous system how indian is different from indigenous i don't know maybe if you say that indigenous means it that lot of stuff some stuff in this may have taken from outside i can tell you no country no country except maybe the french no country makes a defense system a military system entirely on its own most modern military systems take some system or the other from here or the, there if a fly by wire an engine a targeting system and hel- helmet mounted gun etc uh, etc et uh, radar most most military systems are so complex now that one country doesn't manufacture them and if the chinese say they do they are not telling you the full truth because what they do is usually they buy something mostly from the russians and then they copy it sometimes they copy it from the western equipment also so no country does it all entirely by themselves so first of all start calling these indian not indigenous so hal has now presented this indian made combat helicopter which has now been named prachand this was earlier or generally technically it's been called light combat helicopter why light combat helicopter if you look at the picture if you look at the flying demonstrations there is nothing about this helicopter that gives you the sense of being light sleek definitely sleek fast very very attractive looking but there is nothing attractive about an attack helicopter when it comes at you with guns blazing so leave that aside but it is a very attractive helicopter but there is nothing about it that looks light it's only light in the sense that it's lighter compared to other contemporaries which are in the heavier category or which have which carry a lot more weapons lot more fuel go to lot longer distances have a long operating time for example indian india's own apache apache or ah64 is an american a helicopter combat helicopter that indian air force and army have imported it albeit in very small numbers so this light combat helicopter that hal has developed is about half the weight of the apache half the maximum weight for take off so light combat helicopter or prachanda has about 5 and a half tons for exactly 5.8 tons whereas apache has about twice as much as this so that's the reason you call this a light combat helicopter now this will go into service and as a story done by my colleague and our defense editor snehesh alex philip yesterday told you that the helicopter is ready to fly but it still lacks the weapons because you know what i just mentioned to you that a combat helicopter looks like a very scary flight when it comes at you menacingly i think most people will decide to duck 
hide, run, do something. And a lot of people do irrational things like running in the open and to be cut down. You see a lot of those scenes in movies. But you've also seen many of those scenes in live videos. If you see videos of Syria, what's been happening there lately, particularly with insurgents and elsewhere, Syria, Al-Qaeda, those phases. But when nation fights nations, when well-equipped armed forces fight each other, then if one side, if your adversary can see you coming at you, no matter how formidable a fighting force you might be, how good an attack helicopter in this case you might be, if your adversary can see you, you probably have lost that battle already. Because, you know, the nature of warfare has now changed. In today's warfare, particularly as it's been exemplified now by what's going on in Ukraine, because two very modern fighting forces have come in contact there. So th there are the Russians who had the, for the longest time, the second strongest armed forces in the world. I would say technologically, they would claim that in many areas, they are still the second strong strongest ahead of the Chinese, but maybe overall Chinese ahead of them, but they are formidable in their own right. So Russian forces have come in contact with Ukrainian forces, come in, come in hostile contact with Ukrainian forces, which are now being equipped by top of the line Western equipment, not aircraft, but all other equipment. And you can see the side that can see the other first is winning. Right? The side the side that cannot see the other first actually dies or gets shot down or shot up or blown up without even knowing where the missile or the bomb is coming from. So that is how the nature of warfare has changed. So who wins a battle or a war these days? Number one, who sees the other first? It may be milliseconds or microseconds, but who sees the other first? Number two, who has the wherewithal, that means a weapon system, to go and strike the other one the moment you see the other side, the moment you see the adversary. There is no point seeing the adversary to say, Dekha beta, ko dekh liya. that means nothing. When you see the other guy who is hostile, who you don't like, who is fighting you and who you want to destroy, then you should be able to, you should be able to push some button, you should have some missile, some bomb, some equipment, some weapon whereby you go and hit that person. So first thing, who wins the war? One who sees the other first. Second, one who after seeing the other first has the wherewithal to strike him at that distance. And third, very important, has sufficient supply of those weapons, sufficient supply of that wherewithal. So what exactly does it mean? Uh, let me try and illustrate what it means when I say that you have to see the enemy first. Again, you have to have the weapon to fire to reach the enemy. And third, your weapon should be effective. Now, I take you back to 1985. 1985, I reported on India's defense modernization. India's last massive defense modernization took place under Rajiv Gandhi between 1985 and 1989. Remember that it also got him some scandals, including Bofors. It was at that time that all three chiefs, Army, Navy, Air Force, spoke to me formally in interviews for that cover story for India Today magazine. It was that so far back that the first squadron of Miraz 2000s, 7th Squadron in the Air Force, the battle axis, were still forming up. So that far back. And that is when there were questions about Pakistanis having acquired some missiles that we don't have. For example, they had acquired tow missiles. Tow missiles are anti-tank missiles. Then they were the best in the world tube launched, optically tracked, wire guided. Now they are all outdated. So India did not have it. Pakistan got that as a gift because of their support to the Americans in Afghanistan. Also, not long ago, Exocet missiles, the French made Exocet missiles, had played havoc with Royal Navy ships in the Falklands War. Once again, Pakistan had bought Exocet missiles. So I raised these questions then with the chiefs. So first of all, I'll tell you what the army chief said, General Vadya, who had seen battle in 65 and 71 and got a Mahabir Chakra in each one of those. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, after retirement, he was assassinated by six who wanted revenge for Operation Blue Star. So he said to me, I said, don't you worry about this missiles coming in. 
So he said, look, when the missiles are coming at us, I can also see him. I said, but he just has to press a trigger and scoot. He said, no, 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 it's not like that. He has to press a trigger and track his missile to come and hit me. But he knows that I've also watched him, so I'll be firing at him. So remember, the finger that goes for the trigger will also be trembling, right? Similarly, the Navy chief, Admiral Tahiliani at that point, who I regard as the founder of the idea of the Blue Water Navy in India, he said to me, look, these exosets are more successful, I know. They have a higher strike rate than the big Russian missiles that I have, big, huge Russian missiles I have. But count the number of Royal Navy ships which were hit by exosets but still able to survive. Some even sailed back on their own power. So they might have a higher strike rate. But if you see my missiles, maybe, maybe fewer will hit you. But even if one hits you, unlikely that you will live to tell the tale. So armed forces, commanders are always weighing these things. And, and checking each other out. So it is in a situation like that, a new potent weapon system gives you a new capability and gives your adversary something to think about. But remember, once again, you have, have to have enough of them, particularly during a war. Because what happens is, if your armed forces, for example, have the ability to see, see the other side, if this helicopter, for example, has the ability or has with a combination of satellites, uh, drones, other electronics, airborne early, early warning systems or whatever or ground based intelligence has a way of seeing the target early see, and fires and destroys the target. But targets will not all be destroyed because suppose it's tanks then even a country like Pakistan has a couple of thousand tanks. So you will also need supplies of the missiles that do the job for you. We are seeing this problem come up in the Ukraine war. Every other day, you can see the Ukrainians pleading with the Americans and others for more of that HIMARS ammunition, right? It's very expensive, long range, very effective. The Americans, on the other hand, are sort of rationing it, worrying that if they, we give a lot of it, it's very expensive. And they also don't have unlimited inventories. Ukrainians may end up consuming too much of it and then they'll all be short of it. So. First of all, see the enemy first. Second, have the, have the wherewithal, have the weapon to strike the enemy at a distance before the enemy can see you. And third, have enough of these. So you are not rationing them in the battlefield. And with the, it's with, with the third point that the issue of manufacturing at home comes in. Because if you have factories at home that can produce it, you can get those factories to work 24 by 7. You can have people do overtime. You can skill other people in wartime. Motivation levels are very high. And our wars have seen a complete total popular population's involvement in terms of their commitment of time, energy, whatever. You can scale up your production. And that's why domestic manufacture or the ability to design and develop and you manufacture complex defense systems at home is very important. And don't be shy about the fact. Don't hesitate. Don't be embarrassed that systems you make have a lot of content imported from outside. That is the way the world is. It's a globalized world. They just have engines from outside and a lot else. Similarly, this helicopter also has engine developed in collaboration with a French company, but essentially a French engine and much else which is foreign. Now that is where the question of the weaponry comes in. This helicopter is a platform. Right now, Army and Air Force have not placed larger orders. Now the Air Force itself, which is now ordered 10, they will now be using them real time. The Army has ordered 5, so only 15. Once they say they are happy with their helicopter, Maybe they'll come up with suggestions, uh, modifications, needs, because after all, they are the buyers. They are customers and customers always king. Then Air Force intends to buy 65 of these and the Army intends to buy 90 of these. Now, by that time, at least, HAL or the system has to have the weaponry for this helicopter ready. Because this helicopter, like all attack helicopters, has a very effective gun, right? Like a, like a, like a long-range, very powerful machine gun and some of these machine guns, some of these cannons, 
tiny cannons also use special ammunition which can burst tanks and all but that's all in the visual range it also has ra rockets very effective and quite destructive god forbid if one should come and hit any of our homes you don't want any of that happening even to your neighbor's home but again that will be done from visual range so enemies enemies has already seen you and the enemy also has the ability in a country versus country situation then to attack you with weapons or missiles that might be hidden from you or that might be not accessible to your weapon systems so you don't want to get that close so rockets and guns are there but the longer range missiles are at this moment missing so what happens this helicopter is supposed to carry two kinds of missiles one is air to ground missiles those will be used to attack tanks armored vehicles infantry fighting vehicles trucks cars whatever you want to hit on the other side on the enemy side it can be a bunker it can be a radar station it can be a command post anything so for that you need longer range air to ground missiles now this helicopter is expected to use in the course of time the airborne version of the nag missile now nag was an anti tank missile that drdo began developing as part of its integrated guided missile development program that started almost 40 years ago there was akash that is surface to air there was nag that is surface to surface but mainly anti tank missile there was also prithvi and others so this development is of that vintage but this missile has now become more or less operational after trials in many roles but not as yet in air to ground role so while it has been tested with the rudra helicopter which is the combat version of the dhruva helicopter while it's been tested it still has to go through many changes and much more testing and then manufacture will start so this helicopter for quite some time it looks like for about 2 years will not have its main weapon that is a beyond visual range anti tank missile now nag can be anything from 500 meters to currently about 6 and a half kilometers which is beyond visual range but it doesn't give you the safety of being far enough from your enemy's ground based missile systems or from your enemy's airborne threat so might be firing missiles at you but apparently this missile is being developed to have a capability of being able to fire effectively from about 20 kilometers in what is called a fire and forget mode which means you drop the missile and missile locks on and then you don't have to worry about it so that is that is the one thing the other thing is air to air missile so helicopters now are also equipped to fight if if they are challenged by a hostile aircraft enemy aircraft in the air it can be a hostile helicopter it can also be a hostile fighter plane that happens to be close enough to you now if you see the sukhoi 24 25 series aircraft that the russians and the ukrainians are both using in this war these are aircraft which are ground support aircraft and which were which operate in close proximity to the battlefield they are not so much beyond visual range or the americans have their a10 thunderbolt now you can run into any of these systems in a busy battlefield you should be able to fire at a hostile aircraft so you also need today's modern combat helicopters also have air to air missiles that that air to air missile in this case was shortlisted to be the mistral mistral is from a french family of missiles mbda as it's called rafal carries some of those now that program has also got delayed a little bit because in the course of time india has decided to develop these missiles domestically so apparently this will also be a domestically an indian developed missile so what hell has done is because they had to put these helicopters together snehesh tells me they bought these missile launchers or maybe like canisters that you put on these helicopters so you can test these but no real missiles have been bought so the helicopters there it's not yet battle worthy it will not go into battle right away but it's a big achievement so now india has two effective formidable almost among the best in their category aviation systems that is tejas or what used to be called 
एल सी ए लाइट कॉम्बैट एयरक्राफ्ट एंड नाउ प्रचंड विच इज द लाइट कॉम्बैट हेलीकॉप्टर वी सी द अदर लाइट हेलीकॉप्टर वर्जन दैट इज ए लाइट यूटिलिटी हेलीकॉप्टर ध्रुवा इट्स एक्चुअली सम ऑफ द ध्रुवाज विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द इंडियन एयरफोर्सेज एरोबैटिक सारंग टीम बट ध्रुवा ऑल्सो हैज ए वर्जन विच वॉज ऑप्टिमाइज फॉर कॉम्बैट कॉल्ड रुद्रा but once again if you want to see a really formidable attack helicopter or combat helicopter really really scary so and so then you look at prachand or or your lch in fact i had the good fortune 6 years back of seeing its prototype 6 years back i had recorded a series of a two part series of fox the top which i used to then host for ndtv at hal so one part of it was with the developers of tejas and also the scientists designers who were working on amka india's fifth generation aircraft for which now government is given a sanction of more money but that will still take about a decade coming into service but the second part was in the helicopter wing of hal and that's where you find this picture this picture was taken during the recording of that episode in 2016 i think it was in october and you can see me standing in front of the light combat helicopter prototype then suvarna raju who was the chairman and managing director of hal he had said this is still in development stage this will take us 5 to 6 years the fact is in 2022 that helicopter is now gone into service which is very good it could be faster but you know by indian standards this is brilliant this is an indian made helicopter and we should be happy about it we should of course be wishing and hoping that the weapons will come soon enough so this helicopter becomes a fully efficient and capable fighting machine because right now if you look at our air force and uh, and the army there is a shortage of combat helicopters there is a shortage in the sense that there is only a very small complement of the rudra helicopters there is a small complement of helicopters which are really not optimized for combat but carry some weapons but those are these days very vulnerable even 25 years back they were vulnerable 23 years back remember what happened in kargil some of these me 17s which were equipped with rockets and machine guns they were used in desperation to try and dislodge the pakistanis from the heights in kargil they all faced volleys of shoulder launched missiles mostly stingers developed and redeveloped by the chinese the pakistanis uh, called them anza it was very brave of the pilots to go into their those hails of surface to air missiles dropping flares hoping that the flares will deflect them and flares did that until one of those helicopters got hit and was shot down lives were lost on the indian side very well valuable lives and after that me 17s were not used in that role so attack helicopters is a weakness for indian armed forces right now again to buy from outside to make up for these weakness is very expensive that's why the two forces have just bought just over two dozen apache helicopters and god forbid if there is a war these will need to be used very very sparingly so to get the numbers and to get the force levels you need to produce something domestically but this indian system our own swadeshi system must have the capability once one of seeing the enemy first because remember the enemy is also looking for you second the moment you see the enemy it must have the, have the wherewithal or weapon system to strike the enemy accurately and escape and third it must have a sufficient supply of those weapons which are actually like ammunition how much is great machine gun worth if after half an hour of firing or maybe two days of fighting or three days of fighting or 10 days of fighting you might run out of ammunition and your diplomats and buyers and agents then have to go around in other countries searching for more ammunition